This week, are truck stops dangerous places to stop in an RV? We're going to talk about overnighting at a truck stop and a little bit of a scary list that's been going around out there. Plus, we're going to talk about some of our favorite places to stop overnight on a travel day. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 316 of the RV Miles Podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to national parks and travel destinations, and so much more. We're back after a short break. We took a week off uh, to deal with some, well, just a million things going on, really. Uh, but we're we're happy to be back and uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. We're going to talk a lot about overnighting in your RV and all the different things that, that means for different people because I think it is it is something that is quite different for everybody. It means something for everyone. Is it a campground? Is it boondocking? Is it a harvest host? Is it a Walmart? Essentially, we're all overnighting. We yeah. just choose to do it in a lot of different yeah. ways. Yeah, but basically, like the stops that you're taking on a long travel journey until you get to your final destination and you're gonna spend a while. So we're gonna talk about those short overnights and a whole lot more. But first we wanted to talk about uh, something related to that a little bit. This is something that's been going around on social media quite extensively over the last few weeks. You maybe have seen it and it's a a list that a truck driver shared that he was given of places not to stop, of truck stops around the country not to stop. So it's a list of 82 different truck stops Mm -hmm. around the country that the insurance company for this driver did not want him to stop with a high value load. And presumably this flyer went to other truckers working at this company as well. So this trucker was a high value load driver. And that means they're driving just as it sounds, carrying a load that is worth a lot of money, right? So it's not your run of the mill, it's not groceries and cereal and whatever, it's gonna have expensive stuff in the back and there is a greater risk of theft, right? There there are, for lack of a better word, I guess gangs that go around and very strategically steal these loads from truck drivers. And this is something that's been on the rise over the last several years. It's, it has, it is actually something that was at, I believe an all time high last year in 2023. But this list, is it something that we as RVers should be paying attention to? Are these dangerous places for us to stop at? Well, the question. The problem with this list before we even get into it is that the list itself was generated in 2018. Yeah. That's a big problem right there. That's a huge red flag. It's six years old. This list is six years old. Nothing's They're, changed in the world since, no, since nothing. Everything. Right? I mean, I would argue a high value load these days is groceries. I mean, well, that's like, true. That's true. <laughs> Remember back in COVID, it was lumber. Lumber was Toilet very paper. <laughs> expensive. We were when we were we were driving. Sorry, short detour here. We were driving uh, near Fort Knox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know this because there was an overhead sign that said. Fort Knox. Welcome to Fort Knox. <laughs> it was, you know, it was like the there was going to be a, a an exit up ahead to mm-hmm. Fort Knox, and we were behind a lumber truck, and I just like was scrambling, like, so Abby, get your camera out, take a photo. We need to take a. Fo- this is going to be the greatest meme ever that we're going to see a lumber truck driving to Fort Knox back when lumber was extremely expensive. It's come back down significantly now, though it's not super cheap. Uh, but but there's been. Lots of different things that could have been considered high value loads over the last few years. Yeah, I would say toilet paper, bread, lumber, yeah. all of it. But the problem with this list, and if you have seen this in some of the Facebook groups, then you know because a lot of people come in here and they debunk it really quickly because many of the locations are no longer on this list. Yeah. They're not the same places that they were. The information is inaccurate. The sentiment behind the information may not be inaccurate. It may be the desire to educate and to keep drivers safe on the road, to keep us safe on the road as RVers. I understand all of that. The problem is that the list is so outdated. And what it has spurred 
is just this back and forth between people debunking it and arguing about being debunked and being upset that you're going at like taking it very personal like oh you don't want us to be safe or oh you're coming at truck drivers nobody's coming at anybody it's just that the information is wrong so if you're using a list that's six years old then how are you actually staying safe yeah for and, and for something that is not really related to what we do, right? These are not people, not that this stuff doesn't exist, but these people in particular that this load was talking about are not people that are stealing RVs or committing violent crimes against people that are just visiting gas stations, right? Um, the This is specifically about these teams of people that were targeting and still do target these high value loads. So yeah can there be dangerous truck stops out there sure some of these truck stops on this on this list we there i've seen some comments i've been following this all over social media you know i spent all the time in the rv facebook groups out there and there there have some truck drivers have commented on this list saying that oh actually like several of these stops in this state or you know the owners of this this truck stop group um have you know they've hired security teams and stuff and and they've added security cameras and lighting and stuff and now this one is a really great one but this one that's not on the list is is terrible so really yeah pay no attention to it but how can you feel safe at a truck stop i guess is really the question i think we would all love to have a list of places we shouldn't stop handed to us but the reality is we can't get that right yeah and maybe insurance companies aren't the bed best judge yeah, of that yeah, kind of information. Yeah. Maybe we actually need to be leaving it to those who are out there doing it. Like actually put, if this is such a problem and it's so unsafe right now, then maybe we need to have a nationwide list. We need to have something that's more accessible for truck drivers and for their companies and for insurance companies so that this stuff can be made, like put out there in front for everyone to see. Yeah. But if you are really concerned about your safety, you're concerned about crime in an area, you can go online and you can pull up crime maps uh, and you can filter them by violent crime. You can filter them by property crime and you can see if, if an area you're going to is generally safe or not. There's, there's definitely lots of information out there like that, that might be a little bit more accurate, you know, based on like the actual crime reportings that have happened in that area. And I think y'all might be surprised by what you find up against what you read in the Facebook group. Yeah. Because they're not matching up with one another, I guarantee yeah. it. Well, this, you know, goes back to what we always, us as, as Chicagoans for <laughs> 15, 16 years, always <laughs> bristle at the narrative about, uh, about Chicago um, because it's, uh, it's so dangerous. It, it's, it's very uh, it's very misreported. Not yeah. that there aren't a lot of murders in Chicago, but it's also a big city. But yeah, and don't drive your RV through it because somebody's just going to stop you and take it because they... that's what they do in Chicago. <laughs> they just stop people and take stuff. You know, I, I, I have y'all heard of stories? I would love, I mean, seriously, if you've all, if y'all have heard of stories of people that have literally been hijacked uh, with an RV, I've, I, you know, I've been covering the RV industry now since 2016, almost six years now. I have, whoa, have seven a, years, my friend, almost seven years now. <laughs> seven um, years. I have heavily read RV related news headlines every single day. Uh, that's my job. That's what I do. I get tons of RV related news stories every single day. I don't remember. I'm not going to say I've never heard of one, but I don't remember ever seeing an RV hijacking. Mm -hmm. thefts absolutely um turns out if you want to steal an rv you're probably best doing it in storage somewhere right storage slots are where rvs tend to get stolen from you mean just driving um, up to someone's campsite and hooking the rv not, up and just driving away not That's usually not... although i i have seen that I, I i mean i have seen a few stories on that uh rare very rare but Thefts of RVs tend to happen in storage or stored in your driveway, wherever it is, um, just like car thefts tend to happen. I mean, yes, do people hijack cars still these days? Sometimes, but it's rare. If somebody is stealing a car, it's a lot safer for them and a lot easier for them to do it when you're not around, right? Um, so, I, yeah, look up the crime stats if you're concerned about an area, but stopping at a truck stop, especially if you're not overnighting, 
I can't think of any truck stop that I've ever been uncomfortable at when it wasn't nighttime. I mean, we don't overnight. I think maybe we've done it once or twice in the last eight years. Yeah, and, and we know um, a lot of a lot of folks overnight at truck stops. Um, we tend to not to. We tend not to. We tend not um, to just because, for us especially, when we were the. 43 foot fifth wheel uh we didn't really want to take a spot away from a trucker who might need it needs to get off the road yeah and then if you need and to put your slides out you end up taking up essentially two spots if you can't find like an end spot or something like that i would just um, rather go to a walmart yeah yeah i think that's you know we'll get to the to those sorts of places that we like to stop yeah. in a minute but uh but as far as truck stops go we've never found them we have stopped at a few mm -hmm. um i remember one in particular we stopped in minot north dakota we did. actually where i had my brain surgery uh on our way back from canada last year and it was fine but we were in the ibex and parking in an area where the trucks couldn't even really get to mm -hmm. um and we kind of scouted that out in advance but in general truck stops are loud whether it's the trucks driving in and out all night or their engines running all night long um and just the people being around there's a lot of light there's usually right next to an interstate which is i think why a lot of people want to overnight at a truck stop because you've got an interstate right there you may have some food you're gonna fuel up all that sort of stuff but we we tend to avoid them because they're just not a really good night's sleep at all. It's it's not enjoyable, and there doesn't tend to be room for us. Even if you wanted to stop at one, um, and you have you know the size, uh, uh, say you're in a, a class A motorhome, and it's really easier for you, for you to pull in one of those truck spots. A lot of truck stops tend to be full, full, mm -hmm. full, full mm -hmm. of of trucks all night long, and I think that that makes it even hard for. Uh, me to think of it as something that I'm going to count on as a place to stop because there might not be a place I can park. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's just a lot of activity there all night long yeah. and it doesn't, you know, a, if you're stopping for an overnight and then, you know, the next day you're going to keep driving, the best sleep that you can get is really important. So you're not driving the next day as a tired driver, tired yeah. passenger, tired kids. So we tend to just avoid them because they're doing, they're serving the purpose that they're supposed to serve. So if we can find an alternative, like some of the things we're going to talk about here in a moment, we try to do that. Yeah. It just makes more sense for but, us as as RVers. Of course, this is all very dependent on the type of RVR you are. You 100%. might be in a small Class B camper van and you can park absolutely anywhere. Though if that was the case, I probably still wouldn't park at a truck stop because <laughs> no. I'd have more choices, right? No, but, I wouldn't either. But it's, it's going to be very dependent on on the, the people doing it. And of course, there's... There's folks that are um, that are working, you know, just like I think a lot of us with the truck stop thing. There are a lot of people that say, you know, don't stop at truck stops. The truckers need them. Those are working people. Mm -hmm. There are RVers out there that are working. I'm not I'm not talking about us making content and stuff like that. Traveling nurse, you know, um, they're the hotshots that are delivering RVs across the country. Right. I think a lot of times when you see them staying overnight at a at a truck stop, a lot of times it's those folks that mm -hmm. are that are delivering RVs. Can you believe that RVs are delivered essentially one by one across the country? I don't know how else you would do it. It's the be wildest honest. thing to me. I mean, I sometimes it's the smaller ones they can put yeah. two on a flatbed or something like that. But but yeah. I don't know how you would get something like a a beast of a forty five yeah. foot. I just wonder wheel. if there's a way to do it on a train or something like that. But I think they're too wide or too tall. Or, I don't know. I don't Everybody know. Everybody order from the manufacturer yeah. and go up to Elkhart and get it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we're going to get to uh, some more overnight stop options in a bit. We're going to talk about uh, some of the places that we like to stay. But we want to let you know right now that today, as we're recording this, is April 15th. That is tax day. That's what I've been working on today. Fun, fun. Happy tax day, uh, everyone. We we decided to make <laughs> tax day a little bit more enjoyable or you know, give you an option for spending your tax refund. Uh, by opening up tickets for our homecoming rally in Amana, Iowa, this October uh, on tax day. So they are they are out and available now when you're listening to this episode. Uh, and we hope you'll you'll check it out and join us. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. It's a great end to the Midwest camping season, a big, big camper party. So I was just listening on my way down here. I was listening to NPR and um, uh Guy Rizdahl and was that Money Market or the show that they do? On the money? No, 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 no. Market Hour? Market? 
I don't know. I don't the, know. NPR has the greatest names for their shows. And I can't though, remember like... it, but anyway, it's Guy Rizal. And they were talking about its tax day, and they were saying that the average refund this year is around $3,200. That's about $100 more than last year, and that two out of three people get a refund this year. Mm. So, you know, it's tax day, but hopefully you're one of those two out of three people. That and... just means we all overpaid. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but, you know, you still feel good when you're like, oh my gosh, look at all this money I'm getting back. But you're not getting it back. You overpaid it. So, but it's fine. If it's look, it's just American math. What do you want to do? Okay. So, <laughs> but yeah, you should really consider joining us at homecoming in October. We like to remind everybody that. Mile marker members get a discount for homecoming tickets. They get $25 off a ticket. So if there's two of you that want to come this year, that's a $50 savings if you become a mile marker member. Which is $70 a year. So yeah. so, so you've there got mile marker membership for 20 bucks. Yeah, we had someone do that today. Mm -hmm. They became a mile marker member and then five minutes later in came their tickets for homecoming. So it's a great way to come over and become a mile marker member, access that lifetime digital subscription to RV today, get the detour podcast, which is the podcast after the podcast, which this week, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Explore Act. If you watched Jason's video last week, you know that there has been some changes and some things coming down the pipeline for the National Park Service, especially uh, when it comes to filming again in our national parks. But we're going to take a second and, you know, we kind of have, for the most part, a no comment policy with our news videos. We really try to stay hands off. The only time we really jump into the conversation is if it's something really directed right at us or perhaps something that needs uh, was misunderstood yeah. in the news video. But for the most part, we Somebody try Somebody was wrong on the internet. <laughs> hold on, honey. I, hold on. I'll come do the dishes in a minute. Somebody's wrong on the internet. You're like that little cat like that just starts typing away crazy. <laughs> Um, but we we take a pretty hands off approach with uh, comments on the news video. But we thought that for detour, we would address some of those comments that we feel need to have a we need to have a little talking about. We need to talk about those comments. So we're actually going to do it in a more safer space. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do it with mile marker members. So if you want to come in here, maybe uh, our if we did comment and needed to go and get on the internet comments. Uh, pop on over to Detour. We're going to do that here in a little bit. Uh, and that's just for Mile Marker members. at $70 for the year. But if you're interested in homecoming tickets, we will put a link to that in the description. It's a it, We try to keep it as affordable as possible. Mm -hmm. We lose money on it. It is it is definitely not a profitable event for us. It's just a big hangout um, where we have some food and uh, affordable full hookup camping and some great community fun. You know, and I would say that even, you know, you say we lose money on it, but I think what we gain is worth yeah. every single penny that we put into Absolutely. it because of course it, it is. is such yeah. a wonderful time. And hey, parents, if you're listening, kids are free. Kids are free, including we, the food. Yeah, we will feed them. We will include them. They will have their own arts and crafts. They will have their own special stuff as well. The general public tickets are $225 per adult, but all of the kids 17 and under are free. And our three will be there. Jack, Ethan, and Henry will be there. So we would love to see some of your kids there as well. The group of kids that were there last year just melted my heart all over the place. They were just fantastic to watch uh, our young people have their RV community as well, too. Yeah, rvmiles.com slash homecoming if you want to learn more. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. Get ready to use your outside voice. Whether you're camping at a local state park, driving cross-country to a music festival, or just want to try out the RV life before you buy, the adventure begins as soon as you step inside your RV share rental. Choose from thousands of options, including pet-friendly RVs and RVs that can be delivered right to your campsite. Each booking on RV Share also includes 24-7 roadside assistance for the ultimate peace of mind on the open road. With a wide-ranging inventory from affordable pop-up campers to luxury motorhomes, RV Share has a rental that is perfect for you. Use promo code RVMILES30 for $30 off a $500 rental or more at RVShare.com. 
That's RV Miles 30 for 30 off 500 at RVShare.com. Okay, let's talk about overnighting. Okay. On our route. So this okay. is the idea here is not about uh it's it's not about like exploring an area, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to take some time and explore an area, you're probably spending two nights there or you're arriving early enough that you're probably staying at a campground but this is really about you're booking it uh, across a route and you need a stop overnight and you probably want to make that stop as affordable as possible or you need to accomplish some other things so maybe you need to get fuel maybe you need to have dinner Um, maybe you need to buy a bottle of wine (laughs) Yes. So many possibilities. So we, you know, we have changed, I think, over our travels, the the way we handle overnights a little bit. And I think it depends a lot on what we're accomplishing in that trip. And of course, like I said earlier, I think this depends a lot on the type of RVer that you are and the type of trip that you're going to be on. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about campgrounds. I mean, campgrounds are obviously a uh, a clear possibility for overnighting when you're traveling. And I think that's probably what most people do, but there are some concerns there. Well, so that used to be the main way we did an overnight, especially when we were in bussing. In the bus, we did not have... uh, We were not set up for boondocking. We essentially didn't have house batteries. I mean, but this is also 20... (laughs) Let's remember, this is 2016, 2017, 2018. It was easier. Yeah. I mean, this is really before... I would I would argue a big explosion of solar on rigs and yeah. the lithium batteries and you know this was still very much you it, know yeah we didn't have as much off grid capability but also it was easier to call up a campground mm-hmm. uh, when you're two hours from arrival and say hey I'm coming in you got a spot for me and they put you in could you imagine yeah. doing that now yeah I mean no. you, there's, there's, you can do it but like we wouldn't wait that long to figure out where we're going <laughs> no, at, we anymore, wouldn't. you know no, but when we were in the bus we primarily if we needed to overnight yeah. from one destination to another we just did that at a campground honestly now even if we were back in the bus or whatever I can't imagine us doing that that's now yeah. we're very much I I would say for us and we're just going to share our experience again as Jason said numerous times every RVer does RVing differently and that's really beautiful that is our experience is our experience and if yours is different there's absolutely nothing wrong with that nothing yeah. I would say now our biggest for overnight is first we're going to go harvest hosts yeah and after that, we're going to look for a Walmart. Har- the harvest host, depending on what our day is like. So let's just jump right into harvest host as an option. Okay. Um, so harvest host, uh, if you're not familiar, it's a it's a network of wineries, farms, breweries, museums, different attractions across the country. Uh, country that that the company Harvest House has gone and made relationships with all of these different places uh, to allow RVers to stay for one night at them. And these are places that you can stay overnight for free. You do have to pay the annual fee to Harvest House, which mm-hmm. is like it's like 90 bucks now. And I, I don't know. You'll um, hear an ad for them here in a yeah. little bit. <laughs> you can learn more that way. <laughs> you have to pay the, the Harvest House annual fee, of course. And then you have to pay. Uh, then you have to patronize that business. Mm-hmm. So the expectation is that you spend $30. It's not a hard limit. It's not. Um, uh, it's not a hard it, minimum, you mean? Yeah. I mean, it, they're expecting that you it's, it's you know say it's a say it's a museum that has a seven dollar entry and there's two of you the two of you going in and spending seven dollars each is fine there's a suggested purchase of thirty dollars per stay so you know that's that's money that you would mm-hmm. could otherwise spend at a campground but you're getting something out of it so maybe you're getting something fun to do maybe you're getting dinner it's a great option that we have found as a place for dinner because we don't like to cook in the RV on travel days. We, I think we more often than not eat out on travel days. Yeah, we often overextend ourselves on travel days and there's a lot of ways yeah. that we could do it. But frankly, over the last couple of years, it's become a little bit harder for lots of different reasons, um, health reasons, yeah. life reasons, work reasons, travel reasons whatever i think travel so, days we're just we just don't want to like 
get everything out all the time and all that right. sort of stuff. And then we're going to stop somewhere and then get everything out and set up and then, you know, but whatever. I'm not, I mean, I got done. I got tired justifying it years ago. <laughs> whatever. I'm going to go get no, something no, to eat. Just, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, <laughs> I'm just, just going to go eat. If you're not those people, if you prefer to eat in your RV, the, my point being, you might not stop at a restaurant. Right. right? You might not. You might not do um, a harvest host. You might be better just going to the campground or or going to a Walmart for the night. The thing that's really nice about harvest hosts, especially for people who are just sort of getting into RVing and learning about overnighting uh, and boondocking mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff, is it's kind of like reserved boondocking, yeah. right? Because you know you have you you have contacted that host. That host has approved you. You have a stop to stay at for the night that you know is there. Mm -hmm. The challenge is for folks that are overnighting often that sometimes these businesses close at like five o'clock or um, you need it, to get there. It's, by a certain it's something time. you want to experience during the day. It's that sort of thing. So often we'll do harvest hosts maybe the night before our final destination uh, and we get real close so that our last drive day is short. And we spend some time at that harvest host in the morning or, you know, the various different ways we might do it. But but we want to have the extra time to visit that harvest host on a travel day. Right. With harvest hosts, they also uh, own boondockers. Welcome. That's another yeah. option as well, where if you would prefer to actually stay in someone's driveway or on their land and have more of a person to person RV -er, um experience then that's going to be Boondockers Welcome. We have had some incredible experiences at Boondockers Welcome, especially in the early days when we were in the bus. That bo We loved Boondockers Welcome. We haven't used it as much, especially as we were traveling last year up to Baja to Alaska. But I know that for a lot of people, that's another really great entry into sort of boondocking. It's kind of the same thing. You've got reserved boondocking and you don't have to pay, you know, you don't have to, if you don't want to, patronize a business that night yeah. you don't have to do that night that night and, and some of the hosts might even charge you like five bucks to hook up to their power so you yeah. might have that option as well yeah and it sometimes it's just really nice to meet other rvers yeah. as well and to mm -hmm. have that connection sometimes the problem with both boondockers welcome and harvest host is that it might not be places right near the highway mm -hmm. it might take some time to get and frankly that can be the same problem with campgrounds right if you like really love to stay at state parks well like Pulling into a state park is usually not going to be right off the highway. It's going to take you some time to get in there. And they, you know, they might have check-in processes that take some time. You might have to check in before a certain time um, at certain campgrounds. And I, nobody likes to pull into a campsite in the dark. It is such a pain sometimes. Um, and unless, nobody at the state park wants you pulling yeah. into the campground at 10 o'clock at night. Right, right. <laughs> so if we do stay at a campground, it's usually like a full hookup campground that's got pull throughs and yeah. we're, we're not even wanting to back in or anything. We just want to pull through, not unhook or anything and, and get it done. That's often when we will look for something like a KOA journey. Yeah. KOA journeys are often going to be right by the highway. The holiday ones are going to be a little bit more off the highway. They're going to have more amenities. They're really going to be intended for longer stays. But KOA journeys are really designed for that to be a stop that you can come into with plenty of pull throughs and they will have you into those pull through spaces that are close to the entrance. And then you yeah. just get that easy out when you go. So that is for sure another option. I want to walk back something that I said a little bit ago, and I, I want to be really clear about what I said about Walmart and not spending money. I didn't mean it in the sense of like harvest host where there's the suggested $30. Absolutely. If you stay at a Walmart, we do really encourage you to go and spend money in that Walmart, get some grocery shopping and done like or any anything. business you stop at, you should patronize. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I want to be really clear about that because that's a really important way to say thank you to that Walmart or to that yeah. business that's allowing you to park overnight in that parking lot. Just go in and please, uh, you know, get some breakfast. We always like to go in and get some donuts or something, yeah. something fun for the kids. It makes overnighting at Walmart. Walmart actually really fun for them because they know that they're going to get those glazed donuts but in there, the morning. There's never a point in time when we don't need a couple groceries, right? So there's there's always something that we're short on. Always right? take the opportunity yeah, to go shopping yeah. if it's, you can. So so we tend to like campground. Sometimes we will do a, a campground. Sometimes we'll do a very nice campground. If we boondocked for the entire last week, 
we might do one night at a really expensive resort type place. We'll probably want to get there early enough to hang out at the pool or whatever. But sometimes we uh, will use overnights as a way to do our laundry and shower and dump fill and fill the, the tanks, tanks, all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yes. And sometimes it's nice, you know, when we've had the kids being off grid for a week to give them some time in the nice full hookup campground. Absolutely. There's Maybe a- we'll do two nights, not one. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. I there's a lovely thing about RVing is there's just like a million different ways that you can do this. And these are just some suggestions of overnights of how we do it. We would love to know for you when you're doing an overnight stop between one destination and the other, what do you do? Do you take advantage of the campground or do you use services like Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome? Are you tried and true to the Walmarts, the Cracker Barrels? Let's not forget there's those Cracker Barrels out there, although they don't like those big rigs. Yeah, they the- they're... They've got RV sites, but they're they're exactly I think forty foot long. Yeah, so if perfect you're perfect for Bexy, well, but yeah, we we with the IBEX and the truck, we exactly fit in one of those Cracker Barrel mm-hmm. RV spots. The thing about Cracker Barrel, you got to be careful with though, is don't overnight at a Cracker Barrel on like a Friday or Saturday night unless you plan to get out of there real early. Go Otherwise, before they open, you're going to be trapped in that parking lot. We. Can- Mm-hmm. We have, we have, you know, we, we do love, we love the, the, the wall docking and the boon barreling. We have, we haven't, <laughs> oh, we wow. haven't used those, those terms in oh a long gosh. time. Abby's, are... Abby's, uh, boon barrel. <laughs> boon a deep, that's a deep cut. Um, we, but we, you know what, it's a, a, a cracker barrel is, is a great stop where we know all our kids will eat something at the cracker barrel oh. and they will all be happy and mama will be happy. I'm happy. There was one time I remember that we got we could not get out the next morning. That park oh, no. parking lot was so full. So we it, called it the we, it was like the oh. we we called we, it the like the double barrel or something yeah, like something that. I can't funny. remember. Uh, but we had eaten at Cracker Barrel the night before. Mm-hmm. We weren't planning on eating there in the morning. But when we woke up, we were like, "Oh, wait, it's Sunday. Right. I guess we're going to be eating here in the morning." <laughs> Come on, kiddos. Time to go get those chocolate chip pancakes and that coffee. Let's go. But, you know, don't be afraid of places like that. There's still, in, in, uh, for as much talk of, there's no more Walmarts that you can overnight. And it's not true. There's, there, we've stayed at a ton of them and still continue to. There are all sorts of options. Walmarts, and we, we Cracker Barrels. Do a mix. Cabela's. You know, try them all. Yeah. Try them all. I mean, we definitely, uh, we've definitely leaned towards the Harvest Host, but but for us now these days it is really just about where is there what what can we stop at where we need to stop mm-hmm. right and that's the that's the main key yeah and, and we'll still do rest areas too rest areas are, are another option though not always an option in every state um and not always an option for certain size rigs and can be loud as well but rest areas yeah. can work sometimes too so there you go so let us know what we forgot if we forgot anything let us know what you do we'd love to talk to you about it did you know that eTrailer.com is focused on putting actual hands on the products they sell that allows the representatives to see touch and know exactly what it is like to use the product they're providing you with quality service and recommendations based on personal experience if you're looking for a one-stop shop eTrailer.com has you covered with a variety of RV items, including towing options, interior accessories, replacement parts, storage, and more. Have you ever wondered where you can find some of the odd parts for your RV online? eTrailer.com is where you do it. Visit RVMiles.com slash eTrailer and receive free shipping on orders over $99. That's RVMiles.com slash eTrailer. RV Miles is sponsored by Harvest Hosts. Harvest Host is a membership that allows RVers to take a rest from the road and enjoy unlimited overnight stays at over 5,100 unique locations in North America. Breweries, farms, attractions, wineries, and more. Want to check out the 2024 solar eclipse on April 8th but don't have a place to stay? Harvest Host has over 500 locations in the path of totality. Easily plan and book your next RV trip and enjoy over $1,500 in exclusive member benefits by joining Harvest Host. Get 15% off your first year of membership with the code MILES. That's M-I-L-E-S. Go to HarvestHost.com to become a Harvest Host member today. All right, let's check the level of our tanks. Hey, let's do that. And this is always, as it is every single week, sponsored by our friends over at Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the No BS Toilet Treatment. You 
You can find them over at liquefiedrv.com. Okay, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? Uh, so there's a story I, I put into the, the news roundup video this week about this couple that is uh, had declared bankruptcy in Arizona and is uh, had been told by lawyers that you, generally the when this happens, they're full-time RVers, I should mm -hmm. say. That's really key to the story here. Full-time RVers living in a, uh, I think, a 2016 Tiffin motorhome. Um, they declared bankruptcy in the state of Arizona. And uh, you know, bank bankruptcy is a federal filing, uh, but they utilize the state laws. And states generally have a homestead exemption for bankruptcy filing. So you don't lose your home in bankruptcy. It's pretty common. We don't want to have people go homeless when uh, when they file for bankruptcy because mm -hmm. that just you know sends them down a, a difficult path, of course. Um, so the lawyers had told this couple that they they would be able to keep their motor home if they declared bankruptcy. Well, I don't know whoever it was, the arbiter who, who, who you know, is dealing with sending the assets out to uh, the different creditors was not happy with that in this scenario. Maybe it's because the value of the RV, because it, it is a Tiffin, you know, the, they're pricey. Um, you know, maybe their bankruptcy had something to do with what they owe on the Tiffin. I don't know. But this case went to, uh, ended up being the Arizona Supreme Court. And this Arizona Supreme Court ruled that the law does not allow for people to hold on to a trailer or a motor home uh, in, in the bankruptcy scenario, which uh, sets precedent in the state of Arizona where a lot of full-time RVers reside, um, where this is a, a, a challenge for folks that are uh, in that situation now. So I, you know, I, I don't know all the details of this couple's story. You know, I don't know about the motorhome they own. I don't know about them, anything about it. But I think the black tank portion of this is in Arizona, you will lose your RV, even if you are a full-time RVer, if you file for bankruptcy in that state. And I think it just goes to a really larger problem that the government has no idea. It doesn't matter. The state, federal government has no idea what to do with full-time RVers. Can you imagine being the lawyer that gave them that advice? Yeah. Like you oh, go to a lawyer that's supposed to know the law of that yeah. state. And then it's like, yeah. <laughs> oops, sorry. I'm sure the I lawyer was up. like, you know, in Yikes. cases in the past, couple, you know, I'm sure they're. Oh, I'm sure the, I'm sure the it, language you know. was very much like it could possibly be. And I would assume, yeah. but don't quote me on it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a hard. I get that what? there might be look if these if these if they're if this was their biggest asset and it was worth a, if it was worth you know four hundred thousand dollars and they're declaring bankruptcy and trying to keep it I you know I there are some there are some things I can see there oh for sure I mean, um, we don't know the whole story but, but the precedent is a little is a little frightening because mm -hmm. a lot of people and a lot of people that are not well off um, which bankruptcy law is for these folks uh and to help them not get worse um could end up losing their 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 home I mean, so it, the, this the bottom line is don't be don't file for bankruptcy in the state of arizona all right what is in your fresh tank this week my fresh tank this week is uh this announcement from grand design that they're going to be building motorhomes now we knew this in the past i think we shared about this many months ago that this was happening um but they've teased it they sort of put a little teaser out I, again this was something in my news video we don't know much of the details except it's a Mer mercedes-benz chassis and uh it's a, a class b i think or class c motorhome it's a small motorhome um you know, I know Grand Design has been kind of taking it on the teeth recently. and That is not a word I feel like we should be uttering around here right now. <laughs> like, you are a brave human. The thing about Grand Design um, making motorhomes, I I think it it is something that is a little bit exciting to me because I think there's a lull in the mid-range motorhome out there mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of availability of really expensive stuff i think there's a lot of availability of 
um, as affordable as motorhomes can get stuff out there. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff in both of those categories looks the same. I think the mid range stuff, uh, and I'm, I have no idea what this is going to be priced at anything yeah, you like say that. that now. And it's going to be like a $220,000 yeah. class B. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will be some mid range stuff, which is kind of tends to be where the reason I bring that up tends to be where grand design positions themselves for the most part, except for the solitudes and the where um, are all of the decontented class B's? <laughs> where are those? The, there's no decontent class. The detont the decontent class B's are here's your van and it's got it's got no toilet in it. And <laughs> And Here's an empty cargo van. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. But put a hammock in it. Right. Um, so I'm 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 optimistic that Grand Design is going to do something interesting in this niche a little bit. So, all right. What is your black tank this week? Okay. So my black tank. I'm going to run through this really quick. But a uh, news video came out this week. Um, lead story was about the woman who lost her life in an airstream. It was a doctor who was riding in the airstream while it was in motion. The door came open uh, while the Airstream was moving. Uh, she attempted to close the door inside the Airstream. She fell out. Horrific. And she died. Absolutely horrific. I thought that you did. I ended up hearing this, you covering this, because you were editing it, and I happened to be in the room when you were working on this mm -hmm. particular segment. And I thought you handled it really, really well. I thought that um, you know, you showed a lot of empathy, but at the same time, as a really good reminder to all of us that how important it is that we don't ride in a travel trailer. Yeah. I, it, you know, and, there, there, it seems like I said in the, the video, it seems ridiculous to a lot of us that anybody would even consider it. Right. But a lot of people getting into this in the first time, they don't watch YouTube videos. They don't read a lot of people buying the RVs for the first time. They bought one because they thought you could write in it. Yeah, she was too you busy know? saving babies' lives. So the thing is that the reason why I'm black tanking this is I'm just really, really disappointed in the comment section of this video. I am very disappointed. And I if some of you are listening to this and you made one of these comments, I'm disappointed. I think that she paid the ultimate price already and that was her life. And to continue to come at her and call her stupid, to come at her for her degree, to attack her like that, I don't understand the point of it because she's not going to read these comments because she's dead. She's dead. She died. Like, what more do you want to have happen here? So I'm not sure who you're leaving these comments for, but I want to read to you five comments almost completely in a row on this video. I'm going to read them and then we're going to move on because it really frustrates me. Come on, Jason. Call her action what it was. Stupid. Stupid is what stupid does. Here's another one. Darwin. Here's another one. This is now going to be the fifth. I'm guessing the doctor didn't score high in common sense in med school. When, when did we stop having any empathy for people when they make a mistake, be that a small mistake or a mistake that cost this woman her life? I mean, when did we stop having empathy? That's all I'm going to say. I'm really disappointed in this yeah. comment section. I, I just, she, I, our it, viewers were better than this. She probably knew that it's not technically okay to do. Maybe that it's illegal. Maybe that it's not like super safe. But in the end, I think a lot of us do things that aren't super safe. A lot of us ride around without our seatbelts on. A lot of us spend a lot of time riding in the back of pickup trucks and thought that was okay. And there are just, just it, it's, don't ride in an RV. I know there's people listening to this that have written in a trailer and maybe do, or I know a lot of people ride in, in truck campers. I, it's not safe. Please don't do it. Um, and I mean, this is, this is a, an example of what happens. But, um, but do we need, yeah. Why do we need to call this person stupid after she's dead? I don't know. I mean, I think again, you know, we had a lot of people send us the story, email us or DM us. They really wanted to make sure that we had this story. And I, I'm pretty hands off with the news. I don't really have a comment on what goes in it or what doesn't. 
But this one really gave me pause, like, should this be something that we talk about? But it is. It's news. It happened. It's something that we need to discuss because it has opened the door to have those conversations about being safe. It's really unfortunate that this woman had to lose her life in order for this conversation to become a bigger national conversation like it is right now. But I think... I can't imagine because you know we're not the only new obviously because people were sending this to us. We're not the only news agency that's covered this. There are dozens and dozens of articles that have been written, and I guarantee you that this is not the only comment section that is saying these things. And I think to myself, if I was that, if I was her husband, if I was her children, if she was my doctor, if she was my friend, if she was someone I ran into at the grocery store, if she was my neighbor down the street, to see all of these things being said about her it's heartbreaking it's just it's awful yeah, I mean, and you can think that it was a stupid thing to do but why, why you, you, you need it. to go around and talk about it on the why you need to tell somebody else that they should have said it was stupid babe there's someone on the internet being dumb i gotta go i'll <laughs> anyway, be home for dinner later anyway what, what's in your fresh tank uh, so i have two fresh tanks. Uh, the first one is, well, it's a black tank to me to like not getting, you know, into this, you know, I like to wait a good three years before I actually pay attention to anything. But I would like to fresh tank tonight, tax day, is also the draft for the WNBA. We will yeah. be watching it. And tonight there are going to be some superstars, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. They're all going in. They're all going to get drafted. It's going it, to like watching and I think part of it is because we've moved to the Quad Cities. We're only 45 minutes from Iowa City. Everyone here is a Hawkeyes fan. Huge Hawkeyes fan. So it's really hard not to catch the except fever. Except for the Illini fans. Well, except for the Illini fans, but you know. And the Iowa State fans. But and... they don't cross the river. It's fine. <laughs> um so, <laughs> but please, on any given day. This, I mean this, Caitlin Clark's face everybody is everybody's an Iowa Hawkeyes fan right now. Yeah, for everyone's sure, a Hawkeyes fan sure. right now, including ourselves. Like it was thrilling and exciting and I really to watch what they have done for the sport if you're you're watching this then you might notice that I'm wearing a t-shirt that says 18.7 million that's how many people watched that game between the Hawkeyes and South Carolina yeah I mean that is including ourselves literally my children's grandparents were like the kids had, and this is going to tie into my fresh tank, and I'll just segue into this. So on the same day as the game, the kids, two of our boys, Ethan and Henry, they had their um, final performances for their acting class. And they they don't listen to this podcast, but I like to believe that some, sometimes. Uh, no, they don't. I like to believe that one day <laughs> this is going to be texting me. <laughs> I just like to believe that one day this is going to be a... Um, like a journal for them to go yeah. back and to to hear like what our life was like and how proud we are. And I just wanted to say that like I'm really proud of the way that they got up there on stage and they did these scenes and they had to be fully memorized and they all had costumes. It was, really it, was it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And every single parent sitting in that room was literally like tick tock, tick tock. Uh, when is this thing going to be over? Because it started at one and it was supposed to be an hour and the game came on at two and you literally could feel the room it, just it, being like. <sighs> it is one of those things where there's like. Our there, children are more important, but we really like, want to go watch this game. We have two kids <laughs> in two different scenes, but there's like a whole bunch of other classes that you have yeah. to sit through and watch. You know, it's one of those things. And so I hope the my fresh tank is to the our boys that I'm so proud of the way that they have really seamlessly acclimated into this transition here from moving from full-time RVing to stationary life yeah. and how quickly they have made friends and how quickly they have found things that it's they... It's making it a challenge to figure out RVing now. It's making it a challenge <laughs> to figure... It's making it a challenge just to figure out how to get everybody to one place on a yeah. Tuesday night. But I'm really proud of them for, you know, really diving like just right into all of this and for the two of them up there doing that and, and getting up there in front of a full house. There was, I mean, easily a couple hundred of us out there, but like your parents were like, oh, they were so cute. Bye. <laughs> What's great, too, is that it was yeah. in the same theater. This this little theater program called Junior Theater, Davenport Junior Theater, they're losing their uh, they're losing their venue. Mm hmm next year and they've been there for like 45 50 years or something yeah. like that and i performed in this 
program when I was like seven years old yeah. as well. So it was kind of sweet to see that. It was really special because this was also a homeschool acting class. So all of their uh, fellow actors on stage with them in their age group were also homeschooled kids. So that was another really great way for the boys to meet others in the community who are homeschooled. But, you know, your parents, like, so they were so sweet. They, I'm, it was just so sweet of them to come. They drove all the way out there. They saw the boys. But for us, like we had told the kids we would take them to Portillo's, but don't play. We said at Portillo's and literally YouTube TV'd like the game and just sat there like <laughs> everyone else in Portillo's and had the game on. And we were like, <laughs> like all of us just watching the game because we were so invested we in it. probably could have went somewhere that had a TV, but. No, you do not. When, when you tell the kids you're taking them to Portillo's <laughs> for cheese fries <laughs> and chicken tenders, you don't change it. You go to Portillo's. That's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, it is. And just a reminder, homecoming tickets are officially on sale to the general public. Just head over to rvmiles.com slash homecoming to learn more about the event and to also purchase your tickets. And hey, if you are getting ready for the RV season, like so many of us are, please consider taking us with you when you go shopping on Amazon. We haven't talked about it in a while, but we do have an Amazon shop. You just go over to amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles and Jeff Bezos will send us a little bit of money, which we can probably be guaranteed to get unless this was Elon Musk because things aren't looking so great for them over at Tesla. Did you know that Tesla's stock has dropped 35% this year? They just laid off 10% of their 14,000 people. Mm, it's not pretty. Yeah. If you've listened this far into the show, this is like, this is like what happens at the end of the show. We always have these little side conversations. Yeah, it's a little rough, but you know what? Amazon's doing good. So Bezos will cut me a check and that's fine. So if you can head over to amazon.com slash shop slash RV miles, <laughs> we literally appreciate it. All right, y'all, please continue to stay safe, stay healthy. Please don't ride in the back of a travel trailer and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.